Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the afternoon session. And first up is Alessandro Strappa, uh, who will be talking about microscopic mechanisms and the origins of ferroelectricity in hybrid inorganic organic compounds. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for introduction. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, it's the first time for me to attend this kind of. Uh, it's the first time for me to attend this uh, uh, conference, uh, this uh, workshop on ferroelectric materials. So, I'm glad to uh, speak about this uh, microscopic uh, for, uh, mechanism for ferroelectricity in uh, uh, hybrid perovskites. Um, so this is outline of the talk. Uh, the first part, uh, I will be briefly mention um, functional materials, uh, properties, and that means uh, for electricity and magnetism. And then uh, uh, I will briefly mention the, the, the approach, that means density functional theory in combination with symmetry, ana uh, symmetry analysis. And the main part of the talk, uh, we will uh, discuss about hybrid uh, perovskites. Uh, and uh, in particular, uh, this new class of material. And then uh, we will discuss an, in, an interesting example like a copper-based uh, hybrid perovskite, which shows quite, quite interesting uh, um, properties. So essentially, I would like to discuss the following reviews uh, with you. And uh, at, the, at the end of the talk, we should be able to understand what, uh, what is the meaning of this, uh, this figure here. So we have a kind of a chemical formula, ABX3. Uh, and then we have two arrows, which essentially represents, uh, represent two uh, kind of rotations. And they are linked by some hydrogen bonding here. And then we have, we have kind of uh, uh, pictorial equations, the equation that we would like uh, uh, to solve. Um, so uh, we are considering multiferroics, that means uh, materials which show, shows the coexistence of ferroelectricity and magnetism in a single phase uh, compound. And then, uh, um, we have this coexistence, but then we, we may have also the coupling of the two um, uh, ordering. And then we have kind of magnetoelectric uh, uh, properties here. Uh, so uh, by using this material, we can actually solve this equation because uh, we can end up with the possibility to, to uh, change the magnetic polarization by using an external electric field, or we can uh, play with the ferroelectric polarization by using the, uh, some magnetic field, external magnetic field. And people are studying this material because uh, they are quite interesting for possible applications. For instance, uh, uh, you may design some uh, uh, memory element by using four states, that means up and down states of electric polarization, or and up and down states of uh, magnetic polarization. So for the approach, uh, we basically use density functional theory. That means uh, we replace the, the description of the system by uh, the, from the electron uh, wave function, electronic wave function towards the, the charge density, which is much more easy variable here. And then uh, according to these theorems, we can uh, build a density functional theory, which is essentially a first principle or ab initio uh, theory. So we, we have to define the, the geometry here and then uh, the chemical species, so nothing else. And um, so uh, physical properties we are interested in are ferroelectricity and magnetism and eventually multiferroicity and the magnetoelectric coupling. And uh, what we do are, is essentially computational material science. So we can start from some experiments, uh, and then we can go all the way down through this uh, theoretical understanding by using uh, uh, DFT calculations. Then we can complement with some model Hamiltonians, that means spin Hamiltonian or, or tie binding analysis. And then we can also complement with some symmetry analysis. And then we end up with some uh, uh, theoretical understanding of some ex experimental fact. Or we can use uh, the, the other approach. I mean, we can even predict some, uh, some properties, and then we can ask for uh, experimental confirmation here. So uh, as far as the Howard compounds is concerned, so we, we consider a network of metal ions, uh, which are coordinated with uh, organic ligands. Then we have a framework, uh, and the cavities in this framework can be uh, filled by some uh, organic cations. So we can start from some inorganic perovskites, and then we, first step, we replace the A site with some organic cations, and then we may eventually end up with these uh, perovskite halides, which is an interesting class of compound for, 
photovoltaic applications, but then we can use another step and then we can replace the X site with some organic ligand and then we, we have the, this uh, fully hybridized uh, perovskites. So these materials are quite interesting and also new, a new class of material. Essentially, you are, you are using this dual nature, organic and organic uh, uh, component in the same compound. And then this can give rise to some uh, interesting tunability of physical, um, physical properties or even modulating these properties. And uh, they represent an interesting bridge between organic chemistry and also in organic material science. So you can borrow some concept from organic chemistry and you can transfer to an organic material science, and then you can play with this, uh, this uh, together. So this class of material are generally called as uh, metal organic frameworks. Uh, uh, so they are very uh, studied because they have uh, different kind of properties and uh, mainly uh, attractive for gas storage, catalysis, and linear optics. But actually in the few e last few years, people uh, were interested, uh, studied this material because uh, they give rise to some po possible new routes to, to the coexistence of uh, different uh, ordering, like for electricity and magnetism. And then actually the, the, the activity in this, in this respect is quite uh, large because you can see here there is this uh, uh, strong impact in the literature in terms of high temperature in the last years. Uh, so in our case, we started from, from some uh, uh, experimental uh, uh, paper here where they synthesized this uh, series of perovskite hybrid perovskites uh, where A site is uh, this uh, uh, organic cation which is called gualininium and then a B site is a divalent uh, metal atom and the X site is uh, the formate uh, uh, carboxylate ligand. So what was interesting is that in this series, actually only the copper 2 plus uh, member uh, shows some uh, polar space group, so it, uh, is uh, crystallizing in a polar space group. And they show some uh, um, magnetic behavior at low temperature. And then uh, they claim that it could be a new multiferroic hybrid perovskite, but actually they didn't measure the polarization though. So that was uh, our starting point for the simulations. So to summarize this point, we have this uh, perovskite uh, um, topology, then A site, we have this uh, guanininum cation. And actually here you have the resonant Lewis structure that you can take from the organic chemistry. Then a B site, actually we have a copper two plus, but uh, we also predict that copper uh, chromium two plus has the same uh, uh, physical properties here. And uh, it was uh, uh, recently synthesized by some colleague in uh, UK. And then the X site is this carboxylate uh, ligand. So we said copper two plus, which is actually an, a Jan Teller ion. So um, we have a, a copper two plus or eventually chromium two plus, but in any case we have uh, two-fold degeneracy in principle, but according to the Jan Teller theorem, you must split the electronic degeneracy by some uh, distortion. And then uh, you go from um, a regular octahedron and you can uh, use these Q2 and Q3 Jan Teller modes, which uh, uh, introduce some distortion and then give rise to the splitting of the energy level. Uh, so the Q2 mode is uh, the shortening and elongation of the basal bones, and <clears throat> the Q3 mode is a shortening of the basal bones and then elongation of the ap ap apical bones. What is important here is that these uh, distortions are locally, they, they preserve the inversion symmetry. Uh, then to this uh, uh, particular orbital feeling, you may have some uh, particular orientation in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the space. Uh, we can describe this uh, Jan Teller distortion by using this formalism, which is uh, well, well known in the literature. So essentially, we map the distortion through these long, short, and medium uh, bond lengths in a two-dimensional uh, vector, which is Q2 and Q3. And then we can describe this vector in two-dimensional space by using the some polar, um, polar coordinates. And we introduce a phase here, which is related to this ratio of the two uh, two modes. So this is a, a very well known in the literature Then we apply in this case. But here we don't have one, one single ion, uh, uh, Jan Teller ion, we have a cooperative array of uh, Jan Teller dis, um, atoms, then we have uh, uh, distortion which are linked uh, all together. So we have here the long bond of one um, um, Jan Teller ions which is uh, uh, perpendicular to the uh, long bond of the other uh, Yantel ion in the same plane. And this gives rise to what is called antiferrosis distortive distortion. 
And what is important here say, that, uh, is that uh, actually this uh, uh, collective or cooperative distortion actually keeps uh, keep the inversion center in the crystal. And then according to this distortion, you may have eventually the uh, preferential orientation of the uh, orbital. Then you may have also some orbital ordering here. Then we start our uh, DFT simulation. Then uh, uh, according to the theory, we need to introduce a reference parametric stru structure. Then we can describe uh, the low symmetry structure in terms, uh, in terms of some uh, uh, distortion parameters. And then we can monitor the energy profile. So we recover the, the, the double well energy profile, which is characteristic of the, of the um, fluoroelectric system. Then we can evaluate uh, the polarization according to model theory of polarization. So we have uh, at lambda equal to zero, which is uh, the system is uh, centrosymmetric, so P is equal to zero. And then we have a finite value, which is small, but actually we can follow all the way down along this uh, uh, distortion path. And actually in this way we can uh, show that this compound should be, also should be ferroelectric. And, uh, we also monitor, actually by chance, that uh, this, uh, um, uh, the Diane Teller phase, uh, and then we can monitor this, uh, uh, this evolution of the Diane Teller phase according to this distortion. And we see that, that actually there is a, a strong correlation between the polar distortion, uh, polarization, and this Diane uh, Teller phase. Uh, that was quite strange because the polar distortion re requires uh, inversion symmetry breaking, but uh, in this case, a uh, Yantel phase actually uh, maintains the, the, the inversion symmetry, keeps the inversion symmetry. Okay, so uh, it is ferroelectric, but we want to show that uh, it's actually also um, multiferroic, so we need to consider the magnetic ordering. We need some simulation, and we end up with this uh, anti ferromagnetic A type ordering, that means. Uh, um, this, we have ferromagnetic uh, coupling of the spins in this plane, then they are coupled anti-ferromagnetic with the spins in the next uh, uh, plane along the C-axis. We can refine the calculation, we can introduce the spin orbit, and then we have uh, a tilting of the spins, uh, which give rise to a weak ferromagnetic component. So this compound is actually weak ferromagnets, it's an uncompensated anti-ferromagnetic compound. Now we know the trick because we can monitor this weak ferromagnetic component according to this uh, uh, structural distortion. So for lambda equal to zero, this uh, weak uh, ferromagnetic component goes to zero, but, that, but then we can go from lambda plus one and lambda to minus one, which are the two ferroelectric states, and then we have uh, uh, plus m and minus m. We can just plot uh, m versus p, and then we have this uh, kind of linear behavior. Uh, essentially, we are showing that we are, this material is, should be also magnetoelectric. Um, so uh, we've summarized everything in this paper here, was published a few years ago, and uh, we were able to show that these Ian Teller modes, uh, in terms of antiferrodistortive modes, actually give rise some asymmetric distortion in uh, organic A-site uh, uh, cation through hydrogen bonding or coupling, and then this give rise to some induced double moment uh, localized on organic cation. And this, uh, in terms, uh, this um, uh, corresponds to the presence of uh, phoretic polarization in the, in, the, in the unit cell of the compound. Uh, but still, uh, we want to explain something because uh, we, we realized that uh, we published these papers in the same uh, year, I think, and uh, they were speaking about hybrid improper for electricity. Essentially, they, they require the presence of two non-polar modes. Polar, non-polar modes means that they keep the inversion symmetry and specifically they speak about rotations. So in a sense, uh, we have kind of rotation in our compound because uh, um, you remember the plot I showed before, so we have this orbital ordering, but if we consider plus, uh, minus, um, uh, lambda is uh, minus one and plus one, there is kind of uh, a rotation of this orbital pattern, which corresponds to a pseudo rotation in the Jan Teller formalism, so we have, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, rotation in our case. See this, this is quite one uh, variable, uh, non-polar uh, distortion, so, so to say. And then uh, we, we, think, uh, we thought that, that there could be some uh, distortion that we didn't uh, analyze in the first uh, study. So uh, what we did uh, so far, uh, we have done so far, is uh, uh, we keep this um, 
we consider this uh, polar space group, which is the experimental one, and then we described in terms of this uh, centric structure. Then we got some uh, uh, distortion, which may contain also other structural distortion, which eventually are not giving rise to polarization. So the purpose is now to disentangle the different contribution to this uh, total distortion, and there is one uh, standard trick that one can do by using this uh, space group approach, uh, and by using the Bilbao crystallography server with the different tools, so one introduced another reference uh, structure, uh, which is a higher space group uh, uh, symmetry. And, uh, but we don't change any, any, um, in any way the polarization because we keep the inversion symmetry from this group to the other group. But just we change the reference uh, structure in order to analyze the structural distortion. And if we do so, uh, we realize that actually there are three different distortions, uh, gamma 4 minus, x1 minus, and x4 plus which uh, we can analyze in more details. And then we end up that uh, actually the two distortions are non-polar, so in principle they keep inversion symmetry, but they, they are giving rise to an induced uh, polar distortion. So essentially there is kind of a, a hybrid uh, improper mechanism, which was described in that paper. And indeed, we can further analyze these um, different modes here by considering the, the energy variation according to the each mode independently. And then we realize that the two modes, or the, the two non-polar modes, are actually unstable, and then they are actually uh, giving rise to the uh, lowering of the uh, symmetry of the system, and then hybridize, then it's called hybrid um, uh, mode, and uh, then by uh, byproduct uh, there is this uh, uh, polar mode which is indeed uh, stable, so alone it cannot lower the symmetry and also the, the sorry the energy of the system. So this linear coupling uh, is actually um, an ingredient of, for the origin of electricity in this case, and the presence of this hybrid mode breaks uh, the inversion symmetry and by byproduct give rise to this uh, polar mode. Uh, we can analyze in more details the distortion mode, how they look like in the real space. So we can actually uh, uh, display the, the um, displacement, uh, displacement uh, pattern with respect to the reference, sta uh, re reference structure. And here we see that the X4 plus essentially is a Jan Teller mode because you see shortening and elongation, sh uh, shortening and elongation, and so on. So it's a kind of Jan Teller uh, mode that we already analyzed before. Um, but the other one is correspond to the tilting, so again is a rotational mode, but this time is uh, uh, mainly localized on an organic cation, so it's a, a kind of uh, um, uh, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise rotation or tilting of this uh, uh, molecule here. So this is the summary of uh, uh, this description. So we need uh, the two non-polar modes uh, all together, which hybridize, and they are responsible for breaking inversion symmetry. And then the byproduct, you can have this uh, uh, polar mode, which is induced by this linear coupling. Uh, they are, these two modes are unstable and uh, lower the symmetry and also lower the energy of the system. So they are responsible for this phase transition. And um, so here we analyze this uh, um, mode here. So to summarize here, we, we show this hybrid improper nature of ferroelectricity in uh, this multiferroic hybrid perovskite, uh, where uh, we have uh, this trinear coupling, which involved, involved what was its the first case in this hybrid organic, uh, uh, organic inorganic compound. Then uh, uh, a particular case, we have a pseudo rotation through these Jan Teller modes. And then there is a coupling between the two different modes by, through, uh, mediated by these uh, hydrogen uh, bonds. Uh, so uh, now we can expand this figure here. So we have these two modes, uh, a rotation. One is the tilting of the organic cation, and the other one is the pseudo uh, rotation uh, in the, uh, for the Jan Teller the modes. They are linked by uh, Jan Teller, uh, by hydrogen bond, because the organic cation is connected by is interacting by hydrogen bond with the framework here. And then uh, everything was explained this in this paper a few years uh, later. So uh, we, we did uh, quite a lot of work uh, in this uh, complex uh, hybrid perovskite. So we, here is just a summary of, uh, of uh, uh, recent papers. And uh, we recently uh, wrote this book uh, which uh, tried to summarize all uh, the literature about uh, this uh, large family of compound from uh, uh, perovskite lights to different kind of, of metal organic frameworks. Um, 
So there are many people that uh, I should acknowledge in this, in this uh, talk here, so many people that I have been in contact for discussion here, and uh, thank you for your attention. So we have some time for questions, and I'm going to ask the first one. Um, so you said this copper is the only one that's ferroelectric? The copper in that series, yes. In that series. So there's other organic choices that give you ferroelectricity? Sorry, sir? Are there other uh, choices of the organic part that give you ferroelectricity? Well, in this case, we, we keep the organic uh, cation, uh, the, the same as guadininium, but mm -hmm. we change... Uh, we changed the, the copper with the chromium to plus, and actually we have the gain for electricity in this case. I think the make, main role is played by the Yantel uh, ion here, which introduced some uh, kind of distortion, which then correlated with this uh, uh, organic cation in, in this particular case here. Okay. Indeed, if we use another metal atom without any uh, Yantel distortion, we have a centrosymmetric phase, mm -hmm. keeping the same organic mm -hmm. cation. Right. Okay. Thanks. So, questions? Over here first. So, Alessandro, yes. a, a general question. In these MOFs, uh, regarding the multiferroid properties, what are the typical order in temperature for the spins? I mean, you know, do you get something above uh, around room temperature from time to time? Well, the, 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 the real problem for this compound, hope? which are, for, of course, are, they are very interesting because they are new, but the problem is that the organic. Are organic uh, ligand, so the, the connecting uh, bridge between the two metal centers are larger than the standard perovskite. So you usually you get uh, uh, quite low uh, magnetic ordering temperature, like 5 Kelvin in this case, uh, so very, for the weak uh, ferromagnetic component. So, I mean, you cannot think about uh, possible application, but of course... Okay, but that's for this compound, but are there compounds with higher... What is the record? Well, uh, uh, I can say that uh, for the chromium 2+, plus, we did some uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulation for the um, ordering temperature for the magnetic part, and it's uh, like uh, 30 Kelvin. Okay. So, again, uh, quite small. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I have another one. So, uh, in relation to the ferroelectric distortion, which direction do the spins point? Which direction? Yeah, the, out of the canting, the ferromagnetic canting. I mean, uh, the, the, polar, um, the ferroelectric polarization is along the C-axis. Right. And then the, the weak ferromagnetic component is uh, just perpendicular. It's perpendicular. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in the case we, we consider here. Okay. Yeah. So, anyone else? Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sorry, nice talk. I just didn't get uh, what is exactly meant by Yanteler phase, how it's defined. It's like occupa from occupation of the orbitals differently oriented, like well, is, uh, you, you said uh, that it's proportional to polarization or something like that. Uh, well, this Yanteler phase, uh, uh, when you have the splitting of the two uh, degenerate level, you can have a, a, an orbital which is actually a, combination, a linear combination of the so two. So, linear and combination then, defines yeah, and coefficients. And this linear combination can be mapped map back to the, uh, to the lo um, local distortion of the York tahedron. And then you can uh, represent a different orientation of the orbital by using a plot, a polar plot in the, this two-dimensional space. So, according to the different uh, orbital that you are representing with this linear combination, you have different phase.